Hi, so you were there. Well, in this presentation, we're going to have a look at the most remarkable applications in fuel cells. Don't forget, though, that uh, the future is ours, and uh, we need, or we will have a uh, responsibility to look for new applications, new markets for fuel cells in the future. But at the moment, the most, remar the most important applications are these, you can read in this slide, military, portable, energy supply applications also have been widely used in a special industry and in transport. So before you select your fuel cell you must take into account that the different fuel cells in the market will give you different efficiencies and energy densities and also that lifetime <coughs> will be a very important factor before you select your fuel cell talking about durability of the materials yeah, and it will be very related to the temperature and as you see here there are several countries that are already working with fuel cells and have several projects Spain also but not in such a, well in such a way such amount of other, other countries but Spain also has some interesting projects related to fuel cells uh, as we said before different kind of fuel cells will give you different um, well uh, properties different applications because um, the cell efficiency power density and also lifetime will be changing depending depending on the fuel cell so this is an example of how um, different fuel cells will give you different cell efficiencies uh, especially depending on the temperature as well um, this is probably the most important column in this table because uh, you see that uh, for high um, power applications we need to go need to move to very high temperatures for your cells while we are if we require less power we can be using these low temperature fuel cells and well you see depending on all these uh, features these factors considering also the costs of the operation well, the different fuel cells have been applied to different applications like the spatial transport, etc. So, coming, well, starting with with the different uh, separate applications in military applications, looks like it's a significant market because um, these fuel cells are quite efficient and it's good. I mean, it's good for them because they can reduce the number of people working in the field. It's also important because we can uh, tailor made, uh, we can tailor made the different uh, equipments depending on the requirements of uh, the operations, military operations. So here you have some examples of a submarine and some other vehicles, heavy vehicles used in military applications. Uh, and as you see, uh, well, they work with hydrogen, but they also work with very high. Well, they provide very high power densities which is quite interesting. Well another field of application or market is the portable applications market. Well in this case uh, the important the most important fact is the weight yeah, and the operation time. Because what we will um, ask for to this kind of fuel cells is to have a rapid response yeah, and not um, not being very heavy, I mean very quite light. But these purposes, is, um, low temperature fuel cells are quite good yeah? and indeed the most um, commonly applied fuel cells in portable applications will be proton exchange membrane fuel cells yeah? because they use a membrane and then um, because they are solid at room temperature it's very, use, I mean, it's very easy to take it from one place to another and it's very easy to apply them in portable applications. And you can see here um, for example some fuel cells for um, mobile phones, laptops, in this case with this well, little tank. This kind they use hydrogen uh, uh, inside, well hydrogen in this case is a storage not as compressed hydrogen or liquid hydrogen but uh, chemically bonded as an hydride. So it's one of the things we were talking in other presentations. Hmm? Um, if we go a bit farther on in the scale, uh, we can also apply fuel cells to supply power at small scale, a bit bigger than the previous ones. 
in energetic and calorific, and calorific needs. Right? Especially we're talking about the range of 50 kilowatts. Yeah? And in this case, especially at home, in your house, in your flat, do you need to maybe to use your thermomix or, I don't know, the hair dryer? Well, maybe you could use for yourself. In this case, one important um, feature is that uh, you can eventually reform natural gas at your own house eh, and obtain hydrogen. Obviously, reforming of natural gas is not so easy, but if instead of working natural gas, we were using a hydrogen network using the same pipelines, well, why not? I think it's an alternative to use hydrogen in this fuel cells. And unfortunately, there is still a very big competence of other energetic alternatives like the ones used in these days. Yeah. But, well, why not? Uh, using your television with fuel cells uh, in electrical appliances in general, and using hydrogen, not, not very high power, you see, uh, 100 watts, it's not bad. Using your, well, here you see a stack of uh, phosphoric acid fuel cells. You can take it with you. Well, you need it here in the room, in the bedroom, in the shower. Watch Lord of the Rings on your television. Well, never mind. So, coming back to more serious stuff, um, we can also apply fuel cells to supply power, electrical power, at a bigger scale. Um, bigger scale. And this is a more developed market. There are different, there are several plants which are producing energy, electrical energy, at a very big scale. And we're moving around maybe megawatts scale. Eh? Well, in these cases, um, it's very common to use fuel cells working at high temperatures and usually using natural gas, reforming natural gas and then using hydrogen. Eh? Well, the good thing of these operations, as any high temperature operation in fuel cells, is that the mm -hmm. well, uh, catalysts or um, fuel cells have very high tolerance to non-pure hydrogen sources like streams which will be very good for um, making or, um, let's say, lowering the price of the operation because reforming and cleaning the fuel is quite expensive. Well, um, these are some examples of uh, power supply at big scale, yeah, like these uh, modules which are completely compact. Uh, and you don't see what it's inside. inside there are a lot of fuel cells, and individual cells, and there are stacks of fuel cells, one compact to another, to give uh, well uh, power in the range of 4 megawatts, which is quite a lot, with very high electrical efficiency, honestly, again. Well, um, as you see, one of the good things of using high temperatures fuel cells is you can use natural gas, you, can, you have a flexibility in the fuels you can eventually use for the air oxidation, or hydrogen as well. Hmm? As we mentioned before, spatial applications were the first ones to be developed by well people using fuel cells. So I was, I mean, people from the NASA were quite happy to use fuel cells in the Apollo's and Gemini's programs because it was a good way to give, um, I mean, safe energy in special missions. Yeah. It's quite quite interesting and they could even obtain water for uh, well the people in the missions as well. And well one of I think one of the most important things in this kind of applications is that life times were quite high. Yeah. And they have been applied in more than one hundred missions all around these last years. Yeah. So, especially alkaline fuel cells were the first ones to be used in special applications, even in the 50s. And you can see here an example of a power stack which was given 12 kilowatts. Um, so, you, these uh, spacecrafts were using several uh, um, stacks like this one. Hmm? Transport is another important market uh, which is still underdeveloped. Uh, because, especially because of the environmental restrictions which uh, are getting worse during the last years, well, worse for probably for politicians and also for um, vehicles productors, but it's better for the environmental. And, uh, so the, the good, well, here the point is if fuel cells can uh, be competitive with respect to the usual cars, but well, it's not so, it's not so crazy to think that it will be, 
because at the moment some um, hybrid um, vehicles using electrical energy are being developed and they are on the street and eh? the goal is actors with a lot of money can use them like Brad Pitt well, I can't so far but maybe I get famous when I in a few years so I can work I can just come to work with my hybrid car or better with my fuel cell car who knows and you see that cars, um, well, the most important problems with using um, fuel cells in vehicles is that, uh, well, hydrogen or whatever the fuel is might be stored in the boot somewhere. Hmm? And obviously, uh, having a car uh, with a boot full of hydrogen is not a very attractive idea, especially if it blows up. But, uh, um, well, we can maybe you can use alcohols like methanol or ethanol that would be probably safer that will be have less risks but um, well the units which are functioning at the moment use liquid nitrogen compressed in the tanks in the tanks in the boots of the um, of the cars uh, but still needs to take into account the cost energetic cost uh, and obviously the economic cost of compressing and liquefying hydrogen in conclusion, there, are, there is a broad range of applications of fuel cells, including military uses and also power supply at different scales, transport, very interesting, and special, yeah, which are probably the most, uh, the most used in the last years. But uh, it is very important to take into account uh, the different uh, well, factors before selecting a fuel cell. You need to take into account the efficiency and the power density, and depending on the range and the power requirements, um, we will select one or another. So again, the future thing is ours, and it's our task to develop new fuel cells which work better, so that we can find new markets for this kind of technology.